Welcome. It's been a while since I made a video, and this is more of a show and tell of a technique I I, I just recently experimented with, and I, I figured I I might share this with you. So so I'm I'm using, you know, when when you're looking at this road mesh that you're seeing right here, I'm using AI to create the image, and then. I'm, I'm reworking this to create a mesh to then, you know, use for environment building. Now, I, I know that, you know, there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of uh, debate regarding the integrity of AI. I, I have to say that in my opinion, in, in the way I'm using this, I, I do, I do not feel like I'm, I'm stealing from people. I, I think there's still a, a large amount of work that goes into this. I also feel that it's just a, a natural progression of technology that, you know, certain things, the technology has a tendency to make certain things easier and make certain things faster. And I feel to some extent, all these debates are reminding me actually a lot of, you know, you know, things when, when film started to become shot digital or when, when Photoshop came around, right? It's, it's at this point, since 30 years, it's, it's been accepted that, you know, matte painting is being done digitally. Nobody asks anymore if, if somebody, you know, is, is good in painting oil on glass. And, and I'm sure that the people who, you know, who, who were phenomenal in painting oil on glass back in the day, when all of a sudden this shifted to Photoshop, had a problem with that and felt in a similar way. Than some people feel now, and I, I do understand that, and I appreciate that, but I, I don't necessarily think that there is, you know, it's 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 probably not worth fighting it. It's it's probably better to to actually see on how this can be utilized. So, without you know further ado, this is more of a show and tell rather than a step by step, but I will I will show you how this was created. So, what I started out with was. Mid journey. And so I'm, I'm using right here mid journey to create essentially a bird's eye view off, off my row texture. So you can see right there the prompt that I input is texture of cracked asphalt road in frozen tundra, top, top view, asphalt, snow, mud, ice rocks, brown grass. By default, actually mid journey will do a one to one, but I've set it to two to one. So in this case, I have to force it. So these are prompts. So dash dash AR for aspect ratio space one to one. And then I also forced it to, to run this in version six. So these are, these are commands that you have to be careful with in terms of like the spacing. For example, a dash 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 and the V no space, but then for 6.0, there has to be a space in between. Same thing here. Otherwise, it's not. Otherwise, it's just going to fail. I did then upscale this, and if you can upscale it further, there is, in, in my case, I use an application called Topaz. I haven't opened it right now, which is another AI application to upscale this. So I believe you can go to, well, you can, you can go beyond as, as far as far as you like, really. Another option, of course, is to go into Photoshop and to extend it, right, with the generative fill, so which is also AI, of course. So this is then, you know, you have multiple different options. What I then do is I take this picture into this right here. This is free. You can import your, your picture ultimately right there. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a displacement map and a normal map. One of the things that you have to watch out for is you need to be careful that like don't don't use the PNG. Download the TIFF I've noticed because the PNG will be stepped no matter what. So this is this is gonna be something you you gotta be careful with. Even if it tells you on there, I think I found it somewhere that it's supposed to be better than 8-bit, but it's not. So, so yeah, once once this is downloaded, then as a texture, I did then bring this into, well, hang on, no. So then I brought this into Blender as a background, and 
I, I first tried it in Unreal Engine just with the displacement map, and it just w- didn't do enough, in my opinion. So, so what I did is I, I created just a plane, and you know, then I, I really just used the knife tool. You know, in edit mode right here. Let's go into edit mode. So then I, I just used the knife tool right there, and and cut these sections into the plane to you know raise them up or just extrude them up or extrude them down the way I I liked it. And then ultimately I added a I added a modifier. So you know in, in the modifiers right here. So I added a remesh modifier right here to to kind of like you know get this get this relatively clean mesh that you just saw here. So yeah once once this was done now I took all of these elements into Quixel Mixer. I'm sure, you know, most of you are using Substance instead, but I, I, I like Mixer. It's free. It's, and it's really easy. So, so you can see, you know, here I've now kind of like put this on. There's a little bit of wetness on there. You see, I, I don't have a lot working here. There's like a bunch of stuff that I played with, right? You know, and messed around with in terms of adding, but ultimately I ended up, you know, I just turned this on right now. So ultimately, you know, and this is then totally up to you. So maybe, maybe here I should have, this actually looks pretty good. So maybe I just should have gotten rid of some of this, but, but ultimately I, I opted for not using most of those. So just going with what I initially had and. You know, it's, it's really then just a matter to see, you know, how deep is, is my, are my cracks going and whatnot. And this then was, you know, exported. And, and then it's just a matter of like, you know, coming in here and putting it into, putting it in, into, you know, let me find it. Oh, where did you go? There we go. Okay, so then I've imported it, right? So this is this is my road right here. You may have noticed I have a separate one for the spline, and the reason why that is is because I do have a spline running underneath those, but I have like some individual tiles sitting here on top of the splines, and the reason for that is is that they do have displacement on it, but the spline does not, and that's because right now the, the spline just, you know, putting displacement on there is a real performance hit, which I believe is supposed to be fixed in 5.4, fingers crossed. So I, I believe that the spline meshes are supposed to have nanite displacement in 5.4. So, so hopefully that's gonna, that's gonna work out. But you can see right here is, you know, the default material. Let me bring this in here. There's really nothing special to it. So I, you know, I've got, you know, the regular texture sample. This is my color. This is literally just a picture out of mid journey up res a bit. And then, you know, this is just for a color adjust. So that's being multiplied in there. I didn't even do a brightness adjustment here. There is a roughness adjustment here. So you can see right there that I did adjust that a little bit. With a multiply, you have your normal and you have the ambient occlusion. And then the final one, then the final one is, is our displacement. And the displacement mesh, which is this one right here, is going to need to go. So you have to activate your modeling tools. If you, if you have not done it, you got to go into plugins, just type in modeling. So if you, yeah, just enable those modeling tools and then uh, it's going to require you to restart. Once that's done, modeling will be here. And now you can just find your displacement in there, which, let's see, where did you go? So the, right here, displace. And when you activate this, Right now, it's a noise displacement. Obviously, we don't want that. So you go to texture map, and then you're going to import the displacement map right onto here. So you're going to just dump this on there. And that's, 
you know, and then you can adjust how, how intense you want this displacement to be. And this will ultimately then generate the, the displaced mesh for you. So, but yeah, and this is, this is ultimately how this is done. So you can see right there how this is sticking in there. And yeah, I think this is a totally viable way of using AI to assist for, you know, generating textures in Unreal Engine. I did also on the sides, if you need to bend it down, you can use in the modeling the lattice tool. So, which is right here. So this will permit you to kind of like, you know, just, just grab the corners like this and, you know, bend them down if you need to integrate this more, which is can, can be very helpful, right? So you don't see the edges show up too, too extreme. Yeah. And so that was it. I hope that, you know, after, after a long break, this was a, was an interesting, interesting tutorial for you guys. And I'll see you next time. Okay.